everybody and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome my name is Brianna and I'm a third year medical student at ADO school so from the title of this video you already know what it's gonna be about this video basically captures the last six weeks of my outpatient internal medicine rotation I hope you guys like it so I just had my second day of outpatient internal medicine but it was my first day with my regular attending physician and I had so so much fun. The day went by so fast. I got to see a couple patients on my own while the attending just kind of sat behind me and watched me you know gather the history before my physical exam and things like that and I feel like internal medicine is totally just where I'm supposed to be and honestly I feel like I'm leaning towards primary care but who knows who knows things could change but I really feel like primary care is where I'm gonna thrive. Of course I have my reservations about primary care but I feel very happy here and I correctly diagnosed a patient with peripheral arterial disease. I looked at the patient's chart before going in. He was complaining of some left foot pain, cramping after walking a short distance. Sometimes the foot turned like a purplish hue. So that to me sounded like textbook peripheral arterial disease, but the patient also has a history of spinal stenosis and degenerative disc disease and disc herniations. And he also had some ulcers on the bottom of his feet. So we were also thinking maybe this was due to his spine and maybe not due to peripheral arterial disease, but then during the physical exam, I found that he had diminished pulses in the left dorsalis pedis pulse, the left tibialis posterior pulse, and the left popliteal. Femoral pulses were normal. So after that, I told the attending physician, I think we should probably order an ankle brachial index and then go from there. The patient was like, that's a great catch. The physician was like, that's a great catch. And it was super fun. It was super fun. I love this rotation. Basically, when patients come in with chief complaints of memory loss or some difficulty with cognition, sometimes we perform a test called the MOCA test, which stands for the Montreal Cognitive Assessment. And it basically helps to determine how severe a patient's memory loss is. And one of the things they have to do is draw a clock and the clock has to have all of the numbers in it. And then the, the hands have to point to 10 after 11. As you can see, some of these clocks don't even look like clocks. Some people didn't even actually draw clocks and they just wrote clock. So I thought this would just be interesting to share. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I heard two murmurs today and I heard AFib on my auscultation exam. And I heard end expiratory wheezes. This is the first time I've heard that stuff in real life. <laughs> and I diagnosed them correctly. Hello everybody. I just got home from rotations. It's 6 p.m. We got out a little bit later than usual today because my last patient uh, was giving me a hard time. I was having a really difficult time figuring out what was wrong with her, but I always get home from rotations feeling ravenously hungry, so I'm going to make a snack while I talk to you guys. For those of you who have a background in medicine, I feel like once I explain this patient's symptoms to you, you're gonna think it's really obvious what this patient has. Obviously, I'm just giving you like the very low down, the specific high key points, and I had to like tease all this material out from her HPI, so I think for me, it was just a little bit harder because I was trying to deal with multiple symptoms at once and I was getting like a little tiny bit overwhelmed. But basically, we have this woman, she's an older an older woman. A month ago, she was diagnosed with kidney stones. She had a stent placed, but then she developed a UTI and a yeast infection. So they couldn't remove the stone at that time. And then for about two weeks, she was complaining that the stent was causing her discomfort. She felt like it just wasn't placed in the right position and she wanted to get it removed. So two weeks ago, she got the first stent removed. She got a second stent placed. And then at that time, she also got the kidney stone removed. Five days ago, she went back in to get the second stent removed. Today, she presents with fatigue, weakness, lightheadedness, and generally just feeling very unlike her normal self. Lungs were clear, regular rate and rhythm, no swelling, no adenopathy, and review systems, she was positive for chest pain, palpitation, shortness of breath, blurred vision, double vision, fatigue. And so I was thinking, okay, you just had kidney stone, two infections, you had to get two stents placed, then you had to get the kidney stone removed. So maybe she's just feeling really tired and weak because this past month has been crap. Or maybe something else is going on. I went and presented to my attending physician. I told him what I found. He comes back in with me. He has her sit on the exam table. And while she's getting on the exam table, it's kind of clear that she's moving really slowly. She looks kind of weak. She looks like she's struggling. And she's a little bit dyspneic during the process. So then he has her walk up and down the hallway while monitoring her oxygen. And after walking for maybe 40 seconds, her O2 sat drops from 95% to 89%. So now he says, okay, Brianna, with these new exam findings, what do you think is going on? Now I tell 
him, I'm concerned that she might have a pulmonary embolism. So obviously he was like, I also think she has a pulmonary embolism. We send her to the ER. I don't know the results yet because I just saw her today. She's probably in the ER right now. So I don't know what the results of any of the findings are. Moral of the story is I'm disappointed that I didn't catch the pulmonary embolism by myself, or at least like I'm frustrated that I didn't at least have it on the differential diagnosis. I know presenting it to you the way that I did, you were probably screaming, she has a pulmonary embolism. And if this was a board's question, I definitely would have gotten it because let's see, she was, she had surgery. She was in the hospital for three days. So she's immobilized. She's short of breath, has chest pain, has palpitations palpitations, bing, 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 like you think she has a pulmonary embolism, but I'm just a little bit bummed <laughs> that I couldn't think of it myself, but I'm a third year med student. I'm not supposed to be able to know everything on my own. That's why I have the attending. And you know, after he gave me a little bit more details from the physical exam, that's when I was like, okay, I think she has a pulmonary embolism. So I ended up coming to the right conclusion. I think, I don't, I don't actually know if she has a pulmonary embolism, but I ended up coming to the right conclusion, just not on my own. And I guess as a third year med student, I'm not necessarily supposed to be able to do that every single time I see a patient, but still, I feel like I should have missed it. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm being too hard on myself, who knows? Anyway, yesterday I didn't work with a primary care physician and instead I was on the cardiology unit. I saw a stress echo and adenosine maybe, a regular echo, and then I worked with an outpatient cardiologist to see a couple patients in the afternoon. So that was all cool. Um, the cardiology team, they were so friendly. I was really intimidated because, you know, cardiologists are like, they're super smart. And I, I always imagine that they're really intense, but everyone was so nice and so welcoming. They were so humble. They were so willing to answer questions. They encouraged me to participate. And it was just a really nice experience. They thought I did a really great job. So obviously hearing that is nice. Outpatient internal medicine is definitely where I'm the most comfortable. I feel like I'm thriving aside from the fact that I am exhausted because again, seeing patients for nine hours a day and then needing to do AMBOSS and true learn questions afterwards is killer. What I've been doing lately is surprisingly, we have one hour lunch breaks. So I will try to scarf down my lunch in like 20 minutes and then use the other 40 minutes to do some practice questions so that I don't have to do them when I get home because I know that when I get home, I am literally zonked. So only way I'm gonna get questions done is if I find a way to do them during my lunch break. I'll catch up with you guys again when something else cool happens. I had really great patient experiences today. I feel like I learned so much. I saw some really interesting cases. I did get out a half an hour late because we were running behind because of all the complex cases. But update on the patient that I told you guys about last week, you know, the one that I kind of missed that she might have a pulmonary embolism. Turns out she does have a pulmonary embolism. So shout out to my attending physician for being much smarter than I am. Second interesting thing, I had an appointment today with a patient who was following up from her hospital discharge. A couple weeks ago, she presented to the hospital with chief complaint of shortness of breath and fevers. Turns out she had community acquired pneumonia, complicated by also having COVID-19 at the same time. And on top of that, she had two pulmonary embolisms. So with all of that, you can imagine she was feeling really, really awful. It was having a really difficult time breathing. She was going through a lot. Her hospital stay was very difficult, very tough on her. So I followed up with her today to see how she was doing. She told me she's still feeling really crummy. She's very tired. She feels very weak. And when I was reviewing her hospital stay, she was given a steroid. I told her that the weakness that she's experiencing now is most likely a side effect of her taking the steroid. And after a month of having the steroid completely out of your system, she should probably feel better. The attending physician agreed with that. And then I met a patient who had to get a craniotomy a couple weeks ago because she had a subdural bleed. She had a brain aneurysm and literally nuts. I'm telling you today was packed with just crazy intense things. So now she has deficits from the bleed. She has some left upper extremity weakness. She has kind of a slur going on. But other than that, she's doing really, really great, which is amazing because that brain aneurysm, that bleed, it, it could have killed her. But then, you know, she had emergent surgery with a very fantastic neurosurgeon. So she lived and she's doing much better now. And that is awesome. Then I met this guy who has had chronic pain in his wrists and his knees and his ankles and his shoulders. And we've done a slew of tests on him after viewing his labs, which was positive for an ANA titer. I think he probably has lupus. The attending physician agreed he has lupus. Interestingly enough though, I asked him to remove his mask so I could look at his face to look for the butterfly rash that you typically see in lupus patients. He did not have a butterfly rash and he didn't have any photosensitivity, but you know, the positive ANA and then his other symptoms that we got from his history were pretty conclusive for lupus. And when I was listening to his lungs, I literally could not hear anything in the left lower lung base. I truly thought my stethoscope was not working because I heard nothing, like really nothing. So I thought my stethoscope was broken. So I asked my attending if I could borrow his. I listened to the patient's lungs with his stethoscope, still couldn't hear anything. And even 
after that, I was like, okay, you know, I think it's just me. I just suck at auscultating. So then I asked my attending to listen. I was like, look, I can't hear anything. So my attending listens and he was like, yeah, you can't hear anything. Let's order a chest x-ray because I suspect that he might have had a pleural effusion, which is one of the complications of lupus. So we ordered a chest x-ray. Don't have the results of that yet. But yeah, we had another interesting patient. She's been complaining of abdominal pain and some photosensitivity and peripheral neuropathy and chronic pain so it's like a whole slew of symptoms when she was talking about the, the chronic pain and the fatigue and constantly feeling she can't sleep we were thinking fibromyalgia but she has no tender points on exam and then because she had all of these other symptoms we ended up doing again a whole slew of labs and everything came back negative we even checked for porphyria we checked for celiac and we checked a p12 and nothing was coming back abnormal so then today we were like okay let's look into the more rare things so we're gonna drool out does she have diabetes because diabetes is the number one cause of peripheral neuropathy we ordered a tsh to check her thyroid we checked a upep and an spep to rule out or rule in something like uh, multiple myeloma or amyloidosis but yeah it would be crazy if the upep or the spep came back as abnormal because that would probably be the first time i see something like multiple myeloma which is really really rare and then the patient right after that also complains of of peripheral neuropathy and we did like a whole slew of tests on her too everything came back normal so we also ordered a upep and an spep on her and today was just crazy i saw so many exciting things i got to follow up with patients after they were really really sick in the hospital today was a lot of fun exhausting but so much fun because it was such a busy day i didn't really have downtime to do my 20 practice questions so i guess i'm gonna go home and have to do them there which i'm really not looking forward to because after a really fun but long day in the office the last thing you want to do is practice questions second time in the hospital and I have no idea how to get to the radiology department. So I was with an electrophysiologist today and I got to watch a couple ICD implants. It was super cool. I would never want to do it, but it was cool to watch. Look at my cute fit. So as much as I enjoyed my day in cardiology today, I didn't have time to do my 20 practice questions. And it's six o'clock now and I'm exhausted because I was there for nine hours, but because I didn't do them during my lunch break, I have to do them now. And the thought of doing them right now, give me the strength to do it. And I, I know it's only 20 questions and I didn't do any questions over the weekend. So Brianna literally just suck it up, do it, get it done. But when I tell you doing the 20 questions at the end of a nine hour day is the last thing I wanna do. It's the bane of my existence. Oh my God. Yeah, I can't do this. So I'm gonna drink this Alani New energy drink. Uh, it's 200 milligrams of caffeine. And I'm thinking, should I really be drinking this much caffeine at six o'clock PM if I wanna sleep by 10.30? Maybe not, but also maybe caffeine has no effect on me. I don't know because I don't drink coffee. Can't tell if I love it or hate it. Definitely tastes better than coffee though. Who knows, maybe in 20 minutes I'll be freaking wired. Hello everybody, did this guy just flip me off? Dude, what? Why did you flip me off? Literally, what did I do? Okay, whatever, whatever. Brianna, don't even let that ruin your day. That guy was probably going through something. Him flipping you off had nothing to do with you. Okay, whatever, anyway. Happy Monday, everyone. It's my second to last week in outpatient internal medicine. And since today is Monday, I wasn't working with my regular attending. I was working with a different physician. And low key, I was really happy about that because although I love working with my regular attending physician and he pushes me and he asks me lots of questions and it's very engaging and I get to see patients on my own, I am really tired today. I competed in a grass twos volleyball tournament yesterday and I got home really, really late. So on top of me not sleeping well, my body is so, so sore, like everywhere hurts. So I just feel like if I had to see a ton of patients on my own today, I wouldn't have been able to give 100% and patients deserve 100%. So I'm just glad that I didn't have to do all that by myself because I, I would have been not great today. Anyway, last patient of the day that I saw kind of left a weird taste in my mouth. And I might just be overthinking it. And for those of you who are about to listen to what I'm gonna say, maybe you guys also think I'm overthinking it, but then maybe you guys kind of understand the vibe that I got. But anyway, the patient asked, are you studying to become a nurse or are you trying to become a doctor? And the only reason it bugged me is because my badge says medical student, my jacket said medical student, and I was introduced as, this is Brianna, a third year medical student. So when he asked me, are you studying to become a nurse or are you trying to become a doctor? 
it just gave me like a weird vibe and I was kind of wondering are you asking me that because I'm a female medical student and are you assuming I'm trying to be a nurse? Not that there's anything wrong with becoming a nurse, obviously, but I'm just wondering if he assumed that because I was a female student as opposed to a male student. Like, do you get what I'm saying? If it was a male student, would he have even asked, oh, are you are you studying to become a nurse or are you trying to become a doctor? And also the way he worded it, are you studying to become a nurse or are you trying to become a doctor? I could be overthinking it and the guy flipping me off a minute ago probably is making me overthink this more. But you know, I already had a patient be racist to me so you know, would it really be that surprising if a patient was sexist to me? I don't think he was necessarily trying to be sexist but you get what I'm saying, right? You guys know what I'm saying, right? Yes, that was my day. So apparently there's a provider meeting today until 9 a.m which means we're not starting to see patients until 9 a.m., which means I got here at 8 a.m. for no reason, which means I could have gotten an extra hour of sleep, but instead I'm here, so you know what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm gonna do my practice questions, because I'm already here, I'm already here, and I have an hour, so let's do the dreaded practice questions. with a pulmonologist today, bread and butter, lots of sleep apnea, COPD, and some asthma. Um, I'm glad it was only a half day because if I had to do that for eight hours, I'm not gonna lie, I would have been bored out of my mind. Even the provider I was working with was like, I'm sorry today is so boring. Even he was bored. Oh guys, I've seen some things today that make me really wonder whether or not I wanna be a primary care physician. All right, let's talk. I feel like this whole vlog, I've been really positive talking about how much I love this rotation. This rotation is my thing. Internal medicine, outpatient, primary care. This is totally what I wanna do. Okay, well, today I didn't have a good day and it's making me question what the heck I'm doing. So the first thing that ruined my day was a dumb man that I had to deal with before I even went into rotations. I have been walking blue on the same route every single day for the last three months. He always does his business in the same spot. Today, he does his business in the same spot. I pick it up like I always do. I start to walk home and then this car pulls up turns around in the middle of the road, stops in the middle of traffic, rolls his window down to yell at me, hey, this is private property. You're not allowed to trespass. So you're not gonna be able to let your dog poop there. If I catch you doing this again, I'm calling the cops on you. And I'm just like, okay. First of all, why do you have to say it like that? And second of all, the no trespassing sign, literally, it, it must have gotten added like two. Because for the last three months, that sign has definitely never, ever, ever been there. And also, the place where Blue has been going to the bathroom, it's literally at the end of my road at like an abandoned school building. It's not like it's fenced off or anything. It's literally definitely public property. So I'm very confused why there's a sign there that says no trespassing. Did this stupid guy just order a sign off of Amazon and put it on the building? I don't know, like I didn't need that this morning. So then I go into work. I'm already annoyed that that happened. I'm like a couple minutes late because I got stuck behind every single red light this morning every single red light this morning and everyone wanted to drive like 20 miles per hour below the speed limit. And then I'm seeing all these patients and everything's fine until I see this one patient who's there for their Medicare annual wellness visit. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically a 40 minute visit where you go through like a questionnaire that Medicare creates to check upon the general health of the person. You review their family history, their meds, their diagnoses, and it's kind of just like a check-in. They're generally doing well. It's not meant to be a problem visit. If you bring up a problem or two, like, oh, I have some left knee pain because of arthritis, something like that, no big deal. But it's not meant to be a visit where you just kind of bring up every single problem that you have. So before every single visit, I always ask, is there anything in specific that you're concerned about that you wanna make sure we address before I get into all of the questions that I have to ask you for this visit? She's like, yeah, I, I do have a concern. So she says one thing and then I'm like, okay, anything else? And then she says another thing and she starts explaining. And now 10 minutes have passed. And then she's like, oh, and I have this other problem and then another problem and then another problem and then another problem. And all of a sudden I've spent half an hour going through the six problems that she brought up in this visit that's supposed to be 40 minutes covering all of the other stuff that we didn't even get to yet because she was bringing up these six problems. And what frustrated me was that 
Every time she brought up a new problem, the patient said, I meant to bring this up sooner, but since I knew I had this appointment, I said I was just gonna wait. She had six different problems occur at six different times, which could have taken up six different appointments, but instead she was like, you know what? I know I have this one appointment coming up that's meant for something else, but let me just save all of my six appointments for this one visit. And I understand patients don't wanna to go to the doctor multiple times. You don't wanna to go to the doctor six different times. And when you have a visit coming up, you're like, yeah, let me just you know, take note of the things that I'm concerned about. But you also have to understand that when we have a 40 minute appointment and you bring up six different problems that need their own 20 minute appointments, all of a sudden you need like a 120 minute appointment plus the 40 minutes that I was allotted to do the actual thing that I was supposed to do. So I was just really frustrated that that happened because it was just too much. It was really overwhelming and there was just not enough time. It was just too much. And then the other thing, that really upset me during that visit while I was listening to this patient list off her six different problems that she wanted to go through, uh, my leg was shaking. And that's just the thing that always happens, whether I'm anxious or not, whether I'm stressed or not, my leg is always tip, 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 tapping on the floor all the time. I could be chilling watching a movie, totally calm, and my leg will still be tapping. I cannot help it. Halfway through her five problems, she stops and she looks at me and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, why? And then she looks at my leg, she rolls her eyes and she's like, Nothing, never mind. That also just threw me off. I don't know, it just did, okay? It, it really, it really frustrated me. And then after that, another really frustrating thing happened. There was a patient who was seen, not by me and my attending, but by another attending two days ago, who was in good health, no red flag symptoms, nothing. And then the day after, he died, suddenly. We have no idea how he died. We don't have any of the details. All we know is that he died very suddenly a day after he was doing really well in the office. So obviously the family has no answers. They're devastated. And the physician that I work with is technically this patient's primary care doctor, but he's like a new patient. So he's never actually seen this patient, but he is required to write up the death certificate. So even though he's never met this patient, has no idea who he is, he is now tasked with writing up the death certificate of this patient without even knowing anything about the patient and definitely not knowing the cause of death because it was so sudden. So he was on the phone with the state for half an hour trying to convince them to let him do an autopsy for this patient because the family was desperate for answers and you know the physicians were desperate for answers. Why did this relatively healthy man just suddenly die? 30 minutes on the phone arguing and then he got denied an autopsy report. Being a primary care physician, I know it's a lot, but today just like really triggered me. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thank you. Ugh, frustrating. Obviously, when I was working with pulmonology, they just had to deal with the one, the one issue. So the sleep apnea, and that was it. 15 minutes for sleep apnea or 15 minutes for COPD or 15 minutes for pulmonary fibrosis, and that's it. But then in primary care, you have to deal with every single thing, which is the thing I love about primary care, but not when you bring up every single thing in one visit. You know what I mean? And I'm not trying to sound ungrateful. I'm not trying to sound like a brat. I'm not trying to sound like I am complaining and that I hate what I'm doing. But today was just a really frustrating day for me. And I don't want you guys thinking that I enjoy every single day and internal medicine is perfect and primary care is perfect. Like, no, there are definitely flaws in the healthcare system, um, obviously. And today was just like a crappy day for me. Oh, and I forgot to mention, there is a patient that we've had who has had recurrent C. diff infections. He's been treated with a course of metronidazole and a course of vancomycin, and his symptoms were getting better. But then when he stopped the vancomycin, his C. diff came back. So now he has a recurrent C. diff infection. So the metro didn't work, the vanco didn't work. So then we thought, okay, what's the next step? Let's try fedoxamycin. Tell me why the cost of fedoxamycin is $5,000. Who is gonna be able to pay $5,000 for a prescription of antibiotics? Who? You cannot tell me that that is acceptable. So yeah, today has been a really crappy day. Today is my second to last day in internal medicine outpatient and I'm really, really sad. Sad that this rotation is ending because I've gotten like so attached to the team here. They have such a great team dynamic. Their relationship is great. Like the community here is great. They're all so nice to each other. They make so many jokes and it's just such a good time. 
And when I told them that today is my second to last day, the MA, the nurse practitioner, the physician I worked with, and like the rest of the team, they got really sad and they told me like, oh no, I don't want you to go because I'm also getting attached. Yeah, I feel like I made really good relationships with these people, but I'm also sad because I've been here for six weeks and there's one patient in particular that I have met three times in the span of six weeks. So as you can imagine, if he's come in for three visits over the last six weeks, it probably means he's really, really sick. So he always comes in with his wife and his daughter. He's 80 plus years old. When I first met him six weeks ago, he had stage four chronic kidney disease and severe anemia due to his chronic kidney disease. He has to get transfusions regularly. He just started erythropoietin treatment and he's not getting better. And today when I saw him just now, he has progressed to stage five chronic kidney disease. His GFR is 13 and normal is greater than 60. The thing is in person, he seems like he's doing great. He's in great spirits, makes a lot of jokes, telling stories, he feels good. But at this point, his kidney disease is so bad and his anemia is so bad that he probably only has a couple months left and the attending physician discussed hospice with him. And I just got really sad because today's the last time I'm ever gonna see him. And within the next few months, he's probably gonna pass away. And that makes me sad. Well, that's it. Today's my last day of outpatient internal medicine. I just said bye to everyone and I'm so sad. I'm so sad. All right, guys, so that's it. That's the end of the rotation. That's the end of the vlog. I'm sure you know already at this point, if you made it this far, how I feel about internal medicine. It's it's where I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm probably gonna pursue an internal medicine rotation. I have inpatient internal medicine at the start of the next semester, but yeah. Next thing I'm on to is psychiatry, inpatient psychiatry, which I am stoked about, because you guys know I love psych too, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was super long, so if you hate 30 minute videos, please comment down below and let me know, and maybe I'll just, split the videos up into like three week sessions so they can be like 15 minutes in total instead but again thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you've made it this far you're a real one i hope you guys liked it and if you did make sure you like comment share and subscribe and i will see you guys in my next video bye